Hello again, YouTube. So, welcome to video three. This video is going to be covering filtration, and we're just going to go ahead and dive right on into it. In this video, we are going to be discussing three different types of filtration. There are, of course, several other types of filtration devices, methods that you can use. However, I don't have those to show you. So, I'm not going to be talking about things I can't kind of visually describe for you. So we're going to be talking about sponge filters. That's what you see in the corner over there with the air bubbles coming out of it. I have that one of those in every single one of my tanks. Uh, we're going to be talking about HOB filters, H-O-B, which means hang on back. And that's what those guys are on top, hanging on the back. I also have one over here, which is the main one I'm going to show you. And then we're going to talk about canister filters. I got a couple of different kinds uh, that are already out in the open and reasonably well lit. So I will demonstrate the canister filters using those two. Let's start with sponge filters. So sponge filters are super easy to set up. They're pretty easy to do maintenance on and their effectiveness is pretty decent. They are going to filter your water. They are going to help establish healthy bacteria, which will help with your cycle. We'll be talking about the cycle in a later video. And like I said, they're very, very simple. So basically an airline runs in here, connects to that nipple, and there's a nipple on the other side. We then take a, a short cutting of the airline just long enough so that the nipple of the air stone can touch the nipple of that while both of them are attached to the air stone. Or excuse me, the airline. Then we dip it right on in there, right? So the air stone rests right in there and the air bubbles are going to rise. Since it's submerged in water, that's going to create a natural water flow, which turns the bottom portion into a vacuum. Very, very gently, it will pull water through the sponge and exit the water and the air out of the top of the tube. And in between, you're going to be picking up some of your particulates and you'll have beneficial bacteria getting established. Uh, as far as cleaning these is concerned, you are going to have to kind of use a little bit of a trick. Well, you know, I say you have to, you don't have to, but this will make your life a lot easier because when you lift this out of the water, you're going to lose the vacuum. What would happen is your particulates that this has been picking up will come out into the tank. Not all of them, but it, it will make your tank a little bit messy. We don't want that. So we take our Ziploc bag, a one gallon Ziploc bag, we put it in the tank, we get it filled with a bit of water, bring it over to the sponge filter, get it up and under the sponge filter, around it. You can lift it up a little bit if you want to play with it. You know, it's even with the weight on it, it's if you have a quality brand, it's going nowhere. So that's good enough, right? Lift it up, get the bag underneath it, take the uh, take then and pop this off once you have it secured, right? So that that can stay in your tank with the air coming through it, and then you pull it out. You just separate the sponge from the unit, squeeze out the sponge a bunch inside of the bag, and then um, I would recommend you have another bucket or two of water uh, from the tank that you siphon out. And um, you would do this typically during a water change, right? So it's easy to, you already have buckets out or a big bin out. You, you know, I would recommend separate buckets because this will be brown and nasty when it comes out into the first. And then you put it into like a five gallon bucket that's filled halfway and squeeze it a bunch of times. That one won't be quite as nasty. You go to another one. That one won't be quite as nasty as the last one. And you just want to try to get it reasonably clean. You don't have to go crazy on it. You're never going to make it completely 100% clean. And I would not recommend using tap water with it primarily because... There are chemicals in tap water that are typically not friendly to the healthy bacteria. That's sponge filters in a nutshell, guys. Once you're done with the cleaning, once you've gone through about three rinses or so, you can go ahead and put it back together and put it back in. It is going to bleed a little bit of gunk out as you put it back in. It is what it is. That's just kind of one of the downsides of the sponge filter. They're pretty decent products. I would recommend getting them. I personally don't like the finer ones because they're going to be a little bit more labor intensive to clean. So I would recommend going with something like an aquarium co-op or any other brand that has like a coarse sponge filter. But I use aquarium co-op in every single one of my tanks for the sponge filters. So um, that's sponge filters, guys. Any questions that you might have, let me know. All right, so moving along. We talk about the hob filter. It's just much simpler to access. You just walk up to the tank, pull the top off, and boom, you're in there. Now, it will come with 
these inserts. At least this one specifically will. There's different types, but most of them will come with inserts. The inserts are just a thin double th uh, layer of polyfill, one on one side, one on the other, and then in between you'll typically have activated carbon, right? <clears throat> so these do an okay job of filtering, but there aren't any actual stages of filtration. It doesn't go from coarse to fine. You just come up and you go immediately to a finer filter with chemical filtration in it. And although these are relatively inexpensive to buy, you know, solo kind of a thing, you replace these like every week. It gets expensive and you're paying a lot more than you should for this. As far as the polyfill, I got this for like eight bucks. It's a big bag. It's quite a lot. And that'll last quite a while. When it comes to the carbon or any other form of chemical filtration, I don't use chemical filtration. So no carbon, no purigen. I don't use that in any of my filters. So if you don't use that, you got to use something. Well, the first thing I do is I put a pre-filter on it. This pre-filter means that I'm going to be catching stuff just like the sponge filter does, particulates and stuff like that, and have a nice surface area in tank to help establish beneficial bacteria, since this really isn't going to do much for that. Then that water comes up and goes in. Now, I purchased these, sponge, these sponges from Swiss Tropicals. You can get sponges that are meant for this from a lot of different places. I did a cut to fit, and you just continue... So here's how filtration works. You start with mechanical filtration. That's what these sponges are. That's technically what, what the outside edges of this would be. The interior part of this is chemical. But the way it works is mechanical, biological, chemical. Right? If you don't use chemical, then it's just mechanical and biological. Um, mechanical and biological filtration can mesh together. So while this is filtering, it's also growing some beneficial bacteria. While these are filtering, they're also growing some beneficial bacteria. So you start with coarse, so it catches the bigger things, and then you work your way towards the smaller, finer material. And that's going to catch all the little small bits of waste. For this one particularly, it's planted. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about how to do that, and I'm not going to cover the cycle. I'm probably going to cover this in the cycle video to show you a trick, so stay tuned for that. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you how to do this in an upcoming video in this series. But this basically right here would be the equivalent of biomedia. So mechanical and technically biological, getting the water as clean as I possibly can before it gets to my biological media. I want the water to be as clean as possible before it gets there because my biomedia needs to allow water to flow through it. And if it gets gunked up with fish waste, then it's not going to be as good at performing its job. And ultimately, biological media, that's the real brunt of what we're trying to accomplish with filtration. Of course, we want to get gunk out of the water, but the real brunt of why we do water changes and why we worry about that so much is the, the different types of chemicals that spike from fish waste and decay and, uh, you know, breakdown of organics. So this is exactly what, it, what I said. Start off with some mechanical filtration. It gets finer and finer and finer. It uh, also doubles as bacteria. Then you go into straight bacterial uh, filtration, biological, excuse me, and then it goes back into the tank. These are some of the easiest devices to work with. They're not the most efficient compared to like a canister, but they're more efficient in my opinion than a sponge filter. I personally recommend new people start off with both a hob and a sponge filter. And that will just make sure that you have enough filtration to help you out should you be making some mistakes along the way on your learning curve. As far as cleaning this is concerned, you're going to cut the power to it or cut the flow to it by doing that right there. Then you're going to lift this out. Now, I would recommend you cut the power to it if you can, because when you lift this out, the water, if it's flowing, it's going to be very much like the sponge filter. It will leak some of the debris out. So it's best to have it off and then pull out the material. Same exact process. Um, rinse it out in a few different buckets until it's coming out clean and then put it back in. This is technically what is supposed to be the biological development. I don't use this for anything but spacing my materials a little bit away from the edge here so that the water wants to flow to the, to the end and then come up through the top. And that just kind of helps me force it through all of the areas of the sponges rather than just letting the sponges come all the way up to the wall 
having the water come out on bottom flow up and then immediately just over and not using that lower front half of the sponges. I didn't mean to get super technical with you there, but there's a way that a, a reason that I set everything up the way I set it up. Uh, if you ever see water pouring out of this side right here, that typically means that it's time to maintenance your filters, if your uh, or your sponges. If your sponges are fresh, clean, and you're still having overflow, then you probably have restricted your water flow a little too much. You may want to consider either reducing some of the medium grade materials or reducing some of the fine materials to allow the water to flow a little bit more. Maybe it's packed a little bit tightly and the cells that were originally open have been squished a little bit. That's Hobbs in a nutshell. Nothing fancy, nothing special, super easy to work on. Um, reasonably effective, and they come with pretty much every tank kit that you will find. Moving along, now we go to canisters. The reason I didn't advise canisters for somebody who's new is just because of the amount of labor involved, both in setup and in maintenance, and also the initial cost. You're already buying tank, stand, potentially uh, fish, plant, substrate, filtration, heater, air pump, all of this stuff to get started. A canister filter is a lot to add to your plate financially and as far as maintenance and knowledge. I'll try to help you bridge the gap here though. All right. So canister filters don't all work exactly identical. There are some differences. I have two examples here. With this one, water comes in using natural gravity siphon. Now it does create a vacuum. So for instance, this one is hooked up to this tank until I can get longer hoses and get it down or move these guys out of the way. So I don't particularly like it up here but because, because it's working the pump harder than it has to. Siphoning doesn't work, but it's still flowing water right on through there as you can see. Um, but this is ill-advised. You want it to be below your tank so that gravity can naturally feed it in. This one in particular, as the water's coming in, it doesn't open, open up and just come into the canister on top. This one continues the flow with a tube that goes all the way to the bottom and then the water is let go into the canister. Because the pump is running to return water out of this side, it then creates that natural vacuum. So the water being let out on the bottom now lifts up through these trays. The trays are set up just like the hob filter or any other filter should be. You start with your coarsest mechanical media first, so like an open cell sponge or something like that. And then you work your way towards finer and finer material, ending with polyfill if you want, which I actually put a little thin layer of polyfill around these trays because they have like an uh, overflow that allows it to go around. I didn't want to restrict it, but I did want to catch that water a little bit. So I put a very thin layer there. So the water is actually flowing upward through this tray. And then when it gets to this tray, it goes through biological media and then it returns to the tank. This one works differently, but the same. This one, on, instead of having a tube that goes all the way to the bottom and letting it out, it lets it out right up here. But this is set up in such a way where it's divided in the middle down to a point. So the water flows in kind of a U shape, but with the middle of the thing being the divider. So as soon as it hits the top, it opens up and lets the water out. That water has its natural flow through these four vertical sponges that are using up this whole side of the canister. They flow through those sponges and then it use around into... Um, trays. Now if you want to see the inside of these filters, I um, I do have some videos where I open up a brand new Fluval 407 and 307 so you can see what I'm talking about on the inside. I don't cover how it works in that video. I mostly just complain a little bit about nitpicky things, but I love Fluval. Fluval is my main go-to brand for canisters. <laughs> Excuse my voice, by the way. So when the water starts coming back up, then it's going to go through those trays, right? On this first tray on the bottom, I have my finer sponges because this is all coarse. And um, then the rest of the trays, I use biological media. Again, no chemical filtration do I use. Um, you can if you want to. I'm not saying don't. It's, it's, um, it's your party. Do what you want to. But I don't really know many people who do use chemical filtration. I'd understand the use of it in certain situations, but for the most part, you're not going to use it. I, I never have used it in the last year. I haven't used it once. So <laughs> both of these filters work well. There is a difference between them in cost. There is a difference between them in flow rate, but this one being slower flow rate and more expensive, well worth it in my opinion, uh, because of the 
ergonomics, the way things are designed, clear uh, smooth tube versus corrugated, um, how much water leaks out when I'm trying to do a water change, all of that fun stuff. And let's talk about doing the um, water changes and maintenance. <clears throat> so you're going to do just like with the hob. You're going to cut off your power. You're going to then cut off your water flow, right, with whatever mechanism you use. This one, it's this lever. On this one, it's just this guy. Once the power is cut off and the flow is cut off, you can then, with this one, it's this. With these, they unthread. You take them, take the nozzles off. Now, here's the first thing that's going to be very obvious when it comes to cost difference, all right? This guy, when I pull these nozzles off with this piece right here, a couple of drops of water. Really, really good shut off. Doesn't, doesn't really leak. This one, however, when I, when I screw this off, water from right here all the way, uh, right about there, all the way down to where my finger is, since it's an angled, pours out. So I lose about an ounce to two ounces. I'd say it's probably more closer to an ounce of water on each side. So it makes a mess every time I do it. But here's the process. Take a siphon tube from the tank, just like we do with a hob, and fill up three buckets, about two thirds of the way on each. Before you take your lid off, you're gonna take your canister and you're gonna dump it into the first bucket. You don't have to dump the whole thing, just tip it upside down for about 10 seconds and you should be good enough. After that, remove the top, and then you're going to take all of your sponge material out. Even if you have to dig out the biological media to get to the sponge materials, do that. Take the sponges and squeeze them out in the first bit of water. It's going to get nasty just like uh, all of the other filters that we would clean. After that, you're going to take them and put them in the second bucket. You're going to repeat the same process. Squeeze it out real good. And that water will get mucky, but not nearly as bad. Then before you take that to the third bucket, you're going to take the biological media. Put it in the third bucket. Just dip it in and out a couple of times. If it's got a lid, you can give it a gentle little wiggle. You don't want to violently shake it. You do not want to um, let the media come out and then put it back in. All we're trying to do is take any bit of the waste, waste that may have gotten past the mechanical filtration and just rinse it out of there. And if there's any weaker bacteria in there that's um, not holding on real well, that might help to get it out of the way as well. So once you've done that, you can uh, put the biological media back in and then take your uh, sponges out of the second bucket and put them into the third for the last rinse. Now we're doing this because we need a clean water to do the final rinse on the sponges. But the reason I do it in that order is because that water has now been infused with healthy bacteria. So for whatever loss I've had of beneficial bacteria by going from one bucket to the next, I'm probably regaining a good percentage of it. And that just maintains the effectiveness of the filter. After that, you put it all back together again, seal the top, uh, open up the nozzle for flow. You'll, have, you'll hear water kind of flowing into the uh, canister filter. And once it's filled up in whatever form of uh, siphon activation you have is moving water in and out, then you plug it back in, you're good to go. One other thing you could do when you're doing maintenance on these is rinse out the bottom of the tray. Technically, you could do it with a hob as well because gunk will tend to settle with most types of filtration if they're, you know, encased in some way. With that, you can use your tap water to spray it out. If you have exceptionally like high chlorine levels in your tap water, I'd recommend you dry it off first. You don't want chlorine touching your biological media. That's why we're using tank water. Um, and uh, because it can kill your bio, you know, it could completely wipe out your media. And if that happens, you're going to experience a cycle crash. We'll talk about that in a future video. So, um, that's that in a nutshell, guys, that's basically all there is to it. If you have any questions, if there's something I didn't answer or that's not clear to you, feel free to comment below. I do pay attention and I will answer. The next video is going to be on air and heat that will be coming soon. And I thank you for sticking around and checking out my video. We'll see you in the next one.